So it might not be 1983, but I mean, who doesn't like hair down there, right? Bonka chicken bow wow. I know I do. I mean, come on. Remember when you stole your dad's VHS? But well, now I'm showing how old I am. But like, st you stole your dad's VHS, dude, and you're like, what the? What's with them girls? What? Yeah, yeah. That's what we're gonna do today. Nice. <laughs> Hair jig master. Hair jig master. Nice. Whoa. That go. Welcome to Mikey Balls Fishing. Say what's up to Bog. What's up, Bog? Hello, Bog. He's still asleep. Today, fun stuff. So you guys are always asking me to like break down techniques and stuff. Let me throw a disclaimer out there. I don't know everything. I really actually don't know a lot, but I try to learn and I try to go through the process. So like I said, you guys are always asking about techniques and that. One of my like fetishes, it's kind of a filthy word, huh? And we're, we're gonna talk about hair too. So nasty, so naughty. One of the things I really love to do, you know I love to punch, I love throwing that big crankbait. I'm falling in love with this stupid Ned rig, dude, but whatever. One of the things that I really love to do is throw a freaking hair jig. There is no bite like a hair jig. It is one of the most unique bites out there. About three years ago, um, we had a super cold winter down here in Florida. Water temps even dipped into like the mid 50s and so it was freezing. And the fish got suspended and there were giants, like 10 to 15 foot off of like the bottom, like in 25, 30 feet. It was dumb. <laughs> jig perfect bait to get them catches big fish catches just general fish and it's a perfect way to fish kind of like elevated in that that's one of the kind of tactics that we'll actually talk about but as you probably guessed we're going to do a technique breakdown on the hair jig there's a couple different types we're going to focus on kind of like the casting like ledge style hair jig great bait winter summer the two opposite seasons that fish a lot of like but it's super cool bait it, and in my opinion it's like one of those weird nuance kind of baits that it really takes some confidence and some time to learn how to fish. Otherwise, it just feels like you're throwing like a jig with freaking hair on it that's naked out in the water and reeling it. And you, it just really feels like a dumb way to fish until you learn how to fish. So we're going to do kind of a one-on-one -on, -one on hair jig fishing and break it down, um, give you some general kind of ideas as, how, as to how to use it, um, how to fish it what kind of like terminal tackle you need to, to like throw it on and some best you know best situations for it in general obviously you know there's going to be always variances and specifics that vary but um i'll give you kind of my breakdown i think i know how to fish it pretty well because i really really had a grinding lesson um like i said about three years back and hopefully there's some schools around um we're going to try to find idle and find a school of fish and we're going to see if we can find a school that has some fish that are up a little higher um that's one of the most ideal situations for the hair jake so so we're just going to put some time in. You probably won't see a lot of video right off the bat here because I need to idle around and look around and do some work. And then we will get to shooting if we can find a school. If you, get, if you like these technique breakdowns, if you like seeing us out fishing, if you like bog, if you like bog actually, it, it, forget all this other stuff. If you like bog, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button. Drop me a comment in the box below if you got any questions or if you want me to go and try to do something and make a fool of myself. Let me know. Let's go fishing. I think we have some schooling fish. Oh my gosh. Look at them all. Look at them all. Those are all bass, guys. All bass.
official. That might be a better one. Nice. <laughs> Hair jig master. Hair jig master. Guys, we busted out the hair jig. We're fishing a school, and it, you know, there's a lot of fish up high. Oh, here she comes. Oh, no, nope, there she goes. <laughs> and so, um, I, I've caught a lot of big fish on a hair jig, so I want something subtle to start the school off, but at the same time, you know, I want something that, that catches big fish, and this definitely catches them. So, that's what we started off with, and we got a freaking stud on right off the bat. She just crunched it right on the fall, and she does not want to give up. Real key with this hair jig fishing, I love the JTK hair jig, first of all. Secondly, light line, 12, maybe 14 or 15 pound fluorocarbon. Dude, that's a, dude, that's a stud. That's a freaking stud, come here. And a super duper soft rod. That's a nice four pounder to start with, dude. Like, and dude, that's why I love that hair jig. It just freaking sticks them. That's a solid one. But dude, the rod is so important because you need a tip that freaking bends because these guys just suck it in almost like a crankbait. We gotta get back out there. So like I said, there's a lot of different ways to fish this hair jig. So one of the things that I do for suspended fish, say fish that are five to say 15 foot off the bottom, is I'll do the reel, I'll use my rod tip, I'll pause for a second, and then I'll do a second reel, probably about like three to five reels each time. What that does is gets the bait super high in the water column, and then I'll just let it flutter down and I'll go over that process again. Now, if you really have them dialed in, you don't even have to let it hit the bottom, and you can just keep coming up before you see your line go slack. The other thing that you can do is kind of stroke a hair jig, just like you would like a football jig. You wanna have a little bit of slack in your line, not a bunch, and you just jerk it up like that. So you use the rod and then let it flutter down, feel for the bite or feel for weight, and you just give it a little pop. I'm actually double popping it. I kind of like doing that, but you can even one pop and just let it flutter down. And basically you, be, you really need to be a line watcher. I know with the GoPro, you're gonna have trouble seeing the line, but you really see the line jump when these fish eat this thing. So you can stroke it. The other thing too is, and you've probably seen Kevin Van Dam do it. I think this is kind of how he fishes. You almost fish it like a crankbait, man. You point your rod at it, and this will keep it lower in the water column. It'll get less high off the bottom, and you just do some reels. The big trick is, once again, just figuring out your reel speed. Do you want to reel like slow and let it fall? Do you want to go, you know, pulses kind of deal? That's where like feeling out the fish and getting an idea of, you know, what works. That's why it's good to do with the school, because you can kind of, you know, you got a few fish to work with down there, and you can run the bait through. It's not a big aggravating bait, so it's not gonna blow out your school. And um, you, you can really test them out and just feel out what they're gonna bite and what kind of retrieve you wanna use. Fish them. Fish them. Ate it right as I was bringing it up. Come here. Not a giant, but we'll take her. Love catching them. Ooh, out of control. Love catching them on the hair jig. Fish on. Ate it right as it was falling. Oh. Gotta keep her down as she jumps all over the place. Freaking chowed it, dude. Chowed it. Look at that. <laughs> JTK hair jig. We caught some fish on a hair jig. Awesome. Like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, dude, that bite on that hair jig is so much fun because they just, like, they load up on it. Sometimes they'll tap it. You just feel like, but like usually it's just a loading up and that's why the rod's so important. We talked about it, but I use a cranking rod, dude. This is an old endurance, but it's a seven foot two. Um, it's a five power cranking rod. My general go-to is a five ace ounce um, JTK hair jig and that's to cover anywhere from dude like 12 to say 25 feet of water if we get a bunch of wind or something i'll go up to the three quarter but the key with this bait is it's all about the fall so the lighter jig that you can go with the more fall time you get and the more likely you're, you know you're to get a bite because really the more time it's up in the air like that drifting on down is the more time you're you're in the window to get 
The other kind of hair jig that we'll, we'll just touch on, and it's been in some of the last videos, is a marabou jig. Ironically, this is like a spec jig. It's a crappie jig. You can see it's wet because we threw it. We actually broke one off. I was trying to get a fish on it for you to kind of show you like how to fish it and that, but we broke one off. I'll usually throw that on spinning tackle, just a seven foot medium light or medium rod. Um, and usually with this one, I'm gonna be like reeling it more. I'll just kind of slow roll it almost like it's a small swim bait. And then I'll just let it flutter to the bottom go-to weights a quarter ounce an eighth all depends on depth and where the fish are you know with those spotted bass i think an eighth or and a quarter is perfect because you really want it up in the air drifting in the water as much as possible but it's a perfect finesse technique technique when dude when they're just like on really small bait or they're just super finicky it's one of those deals it's a good winter kind of deal it's just one of those deals where we when you got tweaky fish that's the kind of hair jig you want to pick up. So let's talk about practical uses and just kind of recap. So suspended fish. Dude, if you got suspended fish and hair jig is killer. Whether it's the marabou or you know your more standard like ledge style hair jig, dude, you can fish it in a variety of water columns. You can access it way off the bottom. You can keep it near the bottom. It's a great way to target those fish. And like we talked about earlier, it gets big bites. The other thing is summer schools winter schools it seems like for bass they tend to behave the same way in opposite seasons so you get winter you get summer you know they're more lethargic they're harder to catch in the winter but at the same time they tend to pot up just like they do in summer now you might have to fish a little bit faster during the like the summer and that but at the same time it, those hard style baits and that reaction style bite seems key in the summer and key in the winter and a hair jig is a perfect way to do that in kind of a, a nuanced finesse way and it's a great way too to tap into fish that guys really aren't targeting you know a lot of guys will throw a spoon a lot of guys will throw like a suspending jerk bait a, a freaking dude a ned rig a nico rig. you know they'll throw a lot of these schools will see those styles of baits they don't see that hair jig nearly as much just like because of why we talked about it. it's really an art form to fish it like it is not the easiest thing to fish and have confidence in it's a very nuanced style approach so it's something that you can get out and really target and tap into fish in a school maybe it's a community hole but fish that aren't getting targeted because maybe they're higher in the water column or, or like i said maybe they're just seeing other baits and they're not seeing that hair jig we're gonna wrap this thing up though biggest keys to presentation when you're selecting a rod when you're selecting line when you're selecting a reel one you need to fish it halfway slow i actually run it on a 621 reel on that that casting hair jig um I, you, you probably want to pick up more line when it's falling, but it really controls me and keeps me at a tempo where I'm fishing it a little bit slower. You, you can fish it faster and you can fish it fast with a 621, but that's what suits me. But really the biggest thing and the most important thing is you need a rod that has tip. I can't emphasize this enough. These fish will eat the bait and you won't even feel them. Like when it's great, like great and on and all that stuff, you'll feel like literally dude, like I, I can guarantee it'll be like, and that you'll be like, wow, Mike said it would be like, and it, that's what it's like when they're chewing but dude when they're not chewing it really is weight and if you don't have that that give in the tip you want the rod to load up a lot like so a moderate maybe a even like kind of like a semi-fast rod you can do but you need the rod to load up because otherwise you're just going to miss bites dude it'll never penetrate the hook you'll just you'll feel them on there and you'll pull and you'll pull the bait right out of their mouth it's got to load up almost like a crankbait that's really the biggest key whether you're throwing a spinning tackle or whether you're throwing a bait caster rod tip Woo. Well, that's a wrap on this technique breakdown. I hope you guys get out and try to play with a hair jig. Check out that JTK hair jig and the marabou jigs. It's a fun way to catch them, and it's totally different than anything you've ever done. I guarantee it. We'll put links to those products down in the description box so you can check them out at Tackle Warehouse. But if you guys enjoyed this technique video, let me know if there's some other things that we can break down. I don't know everything about everything, but there's a few things I enjoy and I've learned a lot about. So I'm happy to kind of highlight them, break them down, and offer my perspective and the knowledge that I've gained. But if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you like and subscribe. Drop me a comment in the comment box. Let me know what you thought. Let me know if I missed anything with the hair jig. I try to shoot these videos and get through them pretty quick so I can, you know, compact a lot of information into a small little segment and sometimes i miss stuff that's just the way it works but as usual guys it's always cool hanging out thank you for watching you guys make these videos happen if it weren't for you i wouldn't be in this boat and i wouldn't be making these videos so tight lines we'll see you again back out on the water maybe doing some more hair jig fishing but we'll see whatever we're gonna be doing we're catching bass peace